What's up folks? So today we're going to be talking about how you can build a Redshift Tune Shader utilizing the Matcap node. If you find this technique helpful, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel and let's get into it. Okay, so here we are in the Tune Shader Matcap project file that I've set up and we're looking at the shader that's applied to all of these monster objects in my scene. And so we're just going to break this down step by step. So the first step is this first sequence of nodes here that are leading up to this initial mat cap node. So if I solo that, you'll see that we have this grayscale gradient that is cast over our models. This is all being built off this initial texture image. You can actually find this in the Redshift manual on the Maxon site. It's just this image file here and I'll link to it below in the description. But you're gonna plug that into a texture node and then that's gonna go into a grayscale ramp and then that ramp is gonna go into a mat cap texture parameter. And then when you go to the ramp, you're going to want to make sure that all of your knots are set to the interpolation type step. And then I made it grayscale so that we can then recolor the ramp later on, right? And I guess really quick is if you select that mat cap node, you could change the rotation of your mat cap right to reflect the light a little bit differently or just change the, the way the gradient lands on all of these objects. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to go to this color layer node and then we'll break this down step by step. So you'll see that now we're adding in individual colors to each object, some lines around the curves and convex areas, as well as some of these like black splotches within the crevices of each object. The way that we're going to add our color variation is by using a color user data node. And so if I slow that node, you'll see that each object has a different color and that's because in the attribute name, parameter, I went to presets, object, display color. Now you can change each object's display color by selecting the object in the object manager, going to basic, going to display color, custom, and then you can change it to whatever you want, right? And that will be then reflected in your material. And this is really great because then you can have a ton of objects in the scene with the same material and they can all have different colors. So the next layer is a curvature node that's plugged into a ramp and I have this curvature node set, set to convex. And so I'm just selecting for these convex portions of each model. And then that is gonna go into the color layer node and be added over the top. Now you could multiply or subtract or add a color to these, right? And tint your object in various different ways. Like if I wanted to take this ramp and make this color, this neon blue, and then go back to my color layer node. Well, you wouldn't see anything because that color doesn't want to appear. Maybe if I make it red, yeah. Now if I make it red, you can see that we're getting this nice little tint on our convex portions, and I'll just leave that for the time being. And then the next layer in the color layer node is another curvature node. This one is selecting for the concave portions of our models and drawing these just these white lines around the edges. And if I select my color layer, you can see that we're kind of highlighting these portions in the models. And that is also thrown into a ramp that the interpolation type is set to step. Now the final step of this color layer node is actually this ambient occlusion node that's matted over everything. And so I added this ambient occlusion node to the scene, reduced the spread all the way to zero, and then I turned on the reflective parameter. You'll see that that has a big difference in the way that this looks. I just really like the way that this looks. It gives you this kind of harsh pen drawn feel in a way. Then I plug that into a layer and turn that layer to the multiply blend mode over all of the other layers that we have on this node, hit solo. And yeah, you can see it gives it a really strong effect. I, if I remove that ambient occlusion node, I have to disable this layer four. But yeah, if I disable that ambient occlusion node, you still get a nice tune look, but I feel like the ambient occlusion adds a lot of really nice detail into it. All right, now that's the basics of this shader setup. You could obviously go in, tweak all these parameters, add other layers of curvature nodes, maybe add some noises on top of this. You could keep on layering things. But moving on, there are a couple more things that we can do to this setup. The next thing that I did is I duplicated my whole matcap setup, right? So I, down here I have another matcap setup that's very similar without as much detail. But on this one, I didn't use the color user data node to change the colors. I just set one base color at the bottom of my color layer node. That's why everything's red. And then I'm piping both of these color layer nodes from my matcap setups into one final color layer node where I'm combining them. 
I'm using another ambient occlusion to put these two together, right? So if I solo that ambient occlusion, you can see the mat that it's making here. And then obviously you could change that in a couple different ways. You could make it a little bit harsher by bringing down the spread and that'll create some more separation within the colors. But yeah, this is just another way that you could add some more detail, right? And then the final thing that we could do to push this a little bit further is to drop down a redshift standard shader. You're gonna plug your color layer node into the color parameter here. Let's connect the out color to the surface input on the output node, deselect our solo, and you'll see that we're getting even more detail here because one, now our redshift standard shader has the matte cap node, which gives it the tune look, but it's also reflecting lights in the scene now. And I've added a layer of displacement on this as well. So that's giving us some more bump here. And these are just some Grayscale Gorilla smudge maps that I pulled from Grayscale Gorilla Plus, but you could obviously just add like max on noises or whatever into this and add detail that way. I'm gonna go back and drag our initial color layer node into the color parameter of the standard shader because I kind of like that look a little bit better. But this is our final setup. Obviously, this is not a perfect tune shader and doesn't give you all of the flexibility and dexterity of something like the tune shader in the standard renderer in Cinema 4D. But I think this is kind of an interesting setup. And if you're stuck on a Redshift workflow, I think you could get some really interesting stylized looks with this. And honestly, there's so much more you could do here, right? We could keep pushing this for days and days, but I think this tutorial just kind of covers the basics of getting you up and going with the MatCap workflow here. And so that was a quick overview about how you can build a Redshift tune shader utilizing the MatCap node. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see everybody in the next one.